Namaste, my friends, in this series, we understood clearly that our happiness is our essential nature and we have many reasons to understand why happiness is our essential nature. First reason, that we cannot find anything in the world outside. What is that word outside of people, of places, of location, of including the food? They do not contain the property of happiness and peace in them. Can you say water? contains peace. Can you say the soda or the pizza or a particular cloth? Anything in the world. Car. If any object in the world contains the property of peace and happiness, then there is no problem. We need not to study Eastern wisdom. And then we understood that only the human being has a free will, free intellect to discover the inner space. And that inner space beyond the body and the mind contains or is the consciousness, it is the kind, pure consciousness which is of the nature of peace, happiness, love and wisdom. But who is going to find it? <clears throat> I mean to say not a person, who is me? So it is the mind. So in another session we had a practice where we understood in the practice like a mental like a highway. Think of, imagine, like a metaphor, uh, a highway has a three lanes. So the mental highway also has a three lanes. It is just a metaphor to help us understand. So the lane number one invites unwelcome, unwanted thoughts, feelings, images, past experiences. Maybe from this birth or the previous birth, that we will discuss later. <clears throat> so when the lane number one has those unwanted, unwelcome thoughts, the same mind questions, why I am anxious, why I am hesitated. We never think when we have a lot of pleasure. <laughs> <coughs> So when we have a lot of pleasure and it's a continuity is maintained, we forget ourselves because we believe then the world outside contains the pleasure. So let us live our life. But it never happens in the life of any person. One time we feel a sense of loneliness past thoughts in images haunts us, the past impression repeats it again. So the questioning, when we question, why I have that anxiety, I have everything. So that questioning is done by the mind, which is known as the intellect, because we have a free will. We can receive the knowledge. We can realize the knowledge as the science has done it. <clears throat> That is our lane number two. But in the absence of a right understanding, the right knowledge, we look back at the Eastern wisdom, 3,000 years old, 6,000 years old tradition. Uh, estimate, you know, there may be more. There are more than 3,000 texts, more than 3,000 teachers. So think of this. 
Uh, these 3,000 teachers, if they live about 100 years of their life, the 3,000 years had already passed. And they validated that these principles and their practices helps us to reach to a state where there is a pure happiness, where there is a permanent happiness, not pure, permanent happiness, love, truth and wisdom. We can reach to that state. So many people call it as an awakening and some people say it is a realization. But still there is a lot of mysticism around, surrounded by the, this world awakening and realization and the Eastern wisdom removes all those mysticism, all the doubts. Why it removes the doubt? Why it removes the doubt? So that anyone, everyone can receive that knowledge and realize that state. What are the two basic things in realization of that knowledge? Bring an end to the sufferings. I will talk in detail about that later. Three types of the suffering, the physical suffering, the mental suffering, suffering by the natural calamities. And the second result is that I awaken to what I already have. That is why it is known as awakening. I awaken to what I already have, what I, what I have. I have peace, I have happiness, I have love, I have truth and wisdom. The love is my essential nature, essential nature. That is the meaning, that I awaken to what I already have. I have love, I have peace, I have happiness, I have love, I have wisdom. No, but uh, the lay number one constantly invites unwelcome, uninvited thoughts and causes lot of stress and suffering. So switch to the lay number two. Knowledge, understand it clearly, contemplate, reflect. So what is going to happen? Lay number three. What is in the lay number three? The mind reflects. Mind reflects. What it reflects? It reflects our true nature. At present, what is in the lane number one? It is reflected in the mind. Same mind. That is the journey. So while discussing happiness is our essential nature and we realize, we understood that happiness and the peace are not found in the world outside. So where it is found, it is found inside. But uh, there is one question left that uh, I come in contact with a person with an object in the world outside. Say, you buy a new car, so you have that... When you buy a new car, you feel that it gives you the pleasure. So if nothing in the world contains the property of peace and happiness, <coughs> why I experience the pleasure? Is it false? But no, but I cannot say it is false because I like the food I eat and I, I get the pleasure. I wear the dress I like, I feel the pleasure. I buy the car and drive the car that I like, I feel the pleasure. What is all this? So our masters educate that that pleasure is nothing but the absence of hesitation in the mind. Now, lane number one, I told you, uninvited, unwelcome thoughts, lot of desires, if I have this, then I will be, I will be happy if I, if I live in a distance, live at a distance with this guy, then I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. 
so there that pleasure we receive after we are in contact with an object or a person or a thing or the event is nothing but absence of hesitation in the mind. So do you see that? Uh, do you feel, do you mean that mind is already hesitated? So when I come in contact with an object for a temporary period, I find there is no hesitation which I take it as pleasure. Did you understand that? <clears throat> you wake up in the morning, I want tea, I want to, the mind starts in the lane number one. I want to, I want tea, I want tea. And then you have something else to do, you forget and again mind returns, I want, I want tea, I want tea. So you know the repeated thoughts or feeling or awareness or a desire is already causing the hesitation in the mind. So now you go to the kitchen, have a cup of tea and you set it. That hesitation of repetition of the thought stops. And that is what is Master explains that this absence of hesitation is felt like a pleasure. And then the mind starts desiring something else. So the hesitation begins again. And if that desire is fulfilled, hesitation is gone, which is felt like a pleasure. But the fact is that happiness is not there. Should we stop all this? No. But we should only understand clearly. We will put the understanding and the knowledge and the awareness that anything we come in contact with the world outside, our hesitation seems to stop and felt like a pleasure. And that is what we should understand it clearly by different examples in our life and based on the principles of East and West. All experiences of sorrow, suffering, pleasure, peace, uh, reaction, happiness takes place in the mind. Any experience. But due to ignorance, mind with the ego feels as if condition, people, place, time, event outside are responsible for sorrow and the joy. The mind has a clear Total misunderstanding that outer event, condition, people, place, time, event is responsible for this, either for the sorrow or for the happiness. So because it has a misunderstanding, that is why it is an ignorance. So ignorance is not a word to be used here that I am illiterate, illiteracy, no. Ignorance that I have a misunderstanding. I have a wrong understanding, I have an error in perception. So I have an experience of frustration. It happened, for example, with a person. So my mind, due to the misunderstanding, believes as if that person caused pain or sorrow or pleasure, but it is a false understanding. Word is false. False simply means 
what appears true, but it is not true. Is Mirai's water true? Is the blueness of the sky true? Sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening is true? Nothing is true. It appears. It will continue to appear. It will continue to. We, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> we will continue to live into these conditions and changes. But if I have a clear understanding, Mirai's water is not true. So I see the water, but I know it is not. So my mind is not hesitated, it remains calm. At the same time, you should keep that knowledge and understanding that nothing in the world outside has a property of peace, happiness and love. When they don't have the property of peace and happiness outside in the world, so my, I become more and more aware of what is going on in the mind. Why the mind is pushing me? Why the mind is pushing me to run after these objects? One is that the guy is running on the streets and other is the mind is running inside for the sake of desire, for the sake of life, for the sake of attachment. So that running causes the hesitation. What about our real self? The real self, what is the nature of the real self? So we are moving ahead step by step. What exactly is the, you are saying that there is a peace and happiness inside me, love and wisdom. Is, can you ever, can you ever imagine that if the love is not inside, you cannot even express that I love you. If the peace is not inside, you cannot even say that I am in peace. If the happiness and the joy is not inside, you cannot express it. But we link it to the world of even people's situation outside and that, that, so we are understanding absence of hesitation felt like pleasure, but it is not. So before that, we should also understand <coughs> that what is the nature of a real self? So one beautiful example is that the real self is like the sweetness of a sugar. Do you see the sweetness? No, I don't see the sweetness, but when I put it on my tongue, I feel the sweet. So it is like the sweetness of a sugar. That real self is not like, it does not have any shape and the form and the color. It is pure consciousness. It is pure consciousness. <clears throat> the way I don't see the sweetness of a sugar, I also cannot see that real self through my eyes, I cannot taste, cannot smell, cannot hear, but it is there the way the sweetness of a sugar is present in the, and sometimes we make a mistake, you know, uh, the, the salt and the sugar both are in white color, and if they both have the same shape, you can mistake it. So the name and the form and the color, they cannot help me to find the real self. Means what? 
Sense organs cannot help me to find the real self. It is the sweetness of a sugar. <clears throat> now another point that the sweetness of a sugar is never lost. Whether you put it in a big jar, small cup, whether you put it into a beaker or a big jug, you put it into the lemon, and even if you put it into the sword, the sweetness is never lost. Same thing, the sweetness of a real self, that is, its nature is peace, and happiness, love, and wisdom are never lost. Where it is present, it is present here and now. You are real self, means you are peace, you are happiness, you are love, you are wisdom. And, but what is happening to us, how the mind follows a wrong direction? Mind says, if I talk to this guy, if I live with this person or this situation, then I will be happy. So where the mind is going, the mind is going outside. We are living. We have to discover. We have to become aware. We have to find that real self of the nature of peace and happiness inside. So what is the problem, the blocking? What is blocking me? My understanding. I have a wrong understanding. And that is why the mind, is, mind keeps running outside. So you see in all meditation, every master says, close your eyes. By looking at the world outside, I cannot find the peace and happiness, so close. So we close our eyes, we say, no, to see my real nature, I have to close my eyes. Then yes, our mind may say, because of ignorance, our mind may say that, uh, are you mystifying? No, we are not mystifying anything. Eastern wisdom is a journey to the truth that cannot be falsified. It is universal. So we are on a journey to find that truth which cannot be falsified. And that is why I'm talking to you. Why I'm talking to you? So that we are able to analyze, go deeper into every aspect of our endeavor, our thought, feelings, sensations, experiences, relationship, to see if the principles of the Eastern wisdom are valid. If it is not valid, drop it. That truth means that real self is independent of age, gender, situation, condition, country, even the scientists, researchers. So in order to expand that understanding, we have to be very clear what is the misunderstanding, what is the error in perception, so that we can remove that ignorance and we can see by ourselves that the peace and happiness are our essential nature. 
So in order to understand that, we have to examine the way my mind is seeking pleasure, owning pleasure, experiencing pleasure in the world, which cannot be denied. You eat the food you like, you drink what you like, you drive the car you like, you wear the dress you like. So there another question comes, our mind, our master say, maintain your awareness and alertness and to see how many conditions you have to meet to receive a pleasure. To receive happiness by eating in a restaurant. I gave that example in the book. <coughs> so, to receive happiness by eating in a restaurant, we should meet many, many factors, many conditions. We need a car to drive to a restaurant. We should have a petrol, the gas in the car. The car should be in a working condition. We never notice these. We take it for granted. Then we wear a particular dress. We should have enough money to pay for the food. The table in the restaurant should be booked. The choice of the food should be available. The mood should be right. Waiter should respond kindly and uh, waiter should respond kindly many many conditions you know when we say when we say what we say oh i that that celebration was so good i met you nice to meet you but if you are not in a good mood do you say nice to meet you <laughs> or even if you say nice to meet you your mind inside reflects the sadness on your face what we are looking for, we are trying to understand clearly if there is a pleasure outside when we come in contact with anything. You can examine at least three to four incidents where the mind experiences the pleasure. Meeting with a person, eating a food of your choice, or anything. Where first look back the last week, which incident, event, or a person gave you the pleasure, and then start looking for the factors responsible for that pleasure. You will realize that your hesitation in the mind has stopped, which has felt like a pleasure. In the same example of going to a restaurant to eat the food you like, the mind has a desire to eat a particular food. Desire means that you have a liking. So liking causes the hesitation in the mind that we do not realize. I love you. So it is an attachment. That love, you know, that is not a true love when we say that I love you. It is all about the liking. No, no, how can you say I truly love? Well, if you, do, if you dislike a person, would you continue to love? No. So the liking and all the disliking are already present in the mind. That is the lane number one. That is what we are understanding. Oh. So I have to be aware Yes, we are living our life in a waking state, so let us be aware and uh, remove the misunderstanding from the mind. So even if a single condition is not met, we will not be happy. The pleasure will not be there. Do you see that? We are in a restaurant, the table is not ready or restaurant is full or the waiter serves the food or the food is not of the quality that you have tasted in the past single condition is not met 
same thing applies in our relationship. Single condition is not meant that you like a relationship source. Instead of soulmate, they become soulmate. That is one thing. The next understanding that we have to be mindful in living our life daily, that how long that pleasure lasts. <coughs> <coughs> we say that this food gives me the pleasure, so how long that pleasure lasts? As long as I'm eating. How long this shirt gives me the pleasure? How long the driving gives me the pleasure? Is it continuous? Is it permanent? Or is it short-lived? So our master says that any short term happiness which comes and goes when as long as the contact is there, there is a happiness. The contact is gone. Happiness is gone. So that is known as the pleasure. But can I have a luxury to continue that pleasure, for example, you like a particular food and as long as you eat, you have a short-term happiness, but you cannot have a luxury to keep on eating. You do not have a luxury whenever you have a stress, you can eat that food. That is the falsity of the mind. That is the problem in the mind. The mind says, okay, let me eat it, continue to eat it, and we go on overeat, overeating, and the time comes, there is a limit to the valley. The same thing, there is a limit to the mind seeking happiness from a person, which is already not there. The first thing is that it is not there. And second thing, it is a short term, as long as we are in contact with a person or an event. So why should I worry about it? So if I don't worry means I do not hesitate my mind seeking happiness outside is not there. Very important. The topic is absence of hesitation in the mind felt like a pleasure. And sometimes the food that you like, if you overeat, it causes the problem. So instead of a short-term happiness, it has caused you a problem. Can we say with a certainty that the pleasure is present in the food or a restaurant or a waiter? In reality, none of them. It is experienced in the mind when all conditions are met. It is not experienced, the hesitation continues. Hesitation continues <clears throat> if the pleasure is not there. So that makes it clear that the source of happiness is not outside. Second thing, the outer factors are the means, not an end. Outer factors, driving a car to the restaurant of your choice, ordering the food of your choice, the waiter serves and you are in a good, these are the means. We are looking for the peace and happiness, pure peace and happiness. So they are the different means to the end. The mind, due to ignorance, finds that the happiness is outside. That is what I have started <coughs> our understanding today in the very beginning. That ignorance in the mind is a misunderstanding. It is the lane number one. It keeps on inviting uninvited, unwelcome thoughts and those thoughts are being repeated and they cause the likes and dislikes. Based on the likes, I have a desire. Then I 
I, I, then my desire speaks first before I speak to a person, to an event, to a thing. Your desire speaks first to your son or a daughter before you speak. Because there is some kind of an hesitation already in the mind. Why the hesitation is there? Because mind has imagined pleasure with those people. So imagined pleasure doesn't survive like a mirror's water. It is not a fact. That is why our master says that we invoke the principle, but we should inquire, contemplate, reflect. So what happens? Did you understand? When there is a sense of hesitation because of the likes and dislikes and desire and the past impression and uninvited thoughts on the lane number one, the mind is on a journey. <coughs> Excuse me. The mind is a journey to to receive the imagined pleasure which is not there. It blocks the wisdom, it blocks the knowledge. Knowledge lives in the intellect. So that mind paralyzes the intellect. So hesitation continues, mind has already paralyzed the intellect, we keep on thinking, ah, oh, this guy, that guy, this even, that even, did not give me the pleasure I anticipated. Soulmate, now soulmate, so again I make the soulmate. And then I still feel lonely, and I keep on finding the soulmate. It doesn't work. We have an experience. But we are, when we are ready to inquire that I want peace, where it is, location, how it is, then we are on the, already on the path of the Eastern wisdom. <clears throat> so that is why I picked up the practice, last practice, uh, mental highway, three lanes. So you are putting this understanding on the lane number two. You are not fighting with the lane number one. You are not at all interested. You are more interested in putting the knowledge in the lane number two. The way I am thinking for you, you start thinking for yourself and you see what happens. So be very clear. We understood all experiences takes place in the mind. The mind is inside. That is the most important thing. You say, and we say normally, we say normally that I I I, I receive a pleasure eating pasta or wearing this dress or driving this car. So car is outside. Cloth is outside, food is outside. Where I experience the happiness, I experience the happiness inside. Mm -hmm. So that proves that happiness is not there in those objects because everything that I experience, it is happening in the mind inside. It is happening in the inside mind. Are you not clear? Yes, I'm clear. Say yes. So now the next question is the happiness if it, I experience the happiness in the mind, does the mind contain the happiness? Or mind is of the nature of happiness? Answer is no, because the mind sometimes, mood is different, anxiety is there, reaction is there, and still... Uh, so, but I, one thing is sure that I experience that happiness inside. So the next question that we need to inquire, is the mind source of happiness. If the mind is the source of happiness, the solution is easy. 
but that this notion proved false because of the mood swing reaction anger hesitation they are also happening in the mind so if the mind is the source of the happiness there should not be any anger hesitation reaction anxiety fatigue duality and suffering so can we say safely that happiness is not the property of the mind so we have found we have two conclusions can we live with that awareness you will find that lot of hesitation and anxiety and the duality in a conflict simply drops they dissolve you need not to worry about them first thing the world outside do not have peace and happiness in anything in any situation in any condition in the world second is the mind is also not the, not the source of peace and happiness but i experience it that is what we are searching from where that happiness comes so here our master says one more thing you know like car car is an instrument to cover a distance to cover a distance clear <coughs> any instrument so similarly the mind is an instrument not a master but when the mind becomes the master due to likes and dislikes and then it ha it causes the hesitation and in that as it is this state i start searching peace and happiness outside it has become a master and it causes the problem say for example you are driving a car car is an instrument and if the brake fails the car start driving by itself we don't know where we are going to land up that is what happens with the mind that is the lane number 1 that i discussed last time and you did the practice you told me that it's a wonderful practice but our journey continues that where this happiness is i experience happiness that is a fact and it is also a fact that it is mind is not the source of happiness one the world outside is also not the source of happiness we have concluded these two so when we are 100% clear any time the mind desires something from the world outside seeking peace and happiness make it sure it will cause you suffering the moment you claim that the mind is the source of happiness because of the likes and dislikes you are mistaken that is what the ignorance is <clears throat> what is eastern wisdom we are removing eastern wisdom is an instrument of knowledge that helps us to remove that ignorance settled in the knowledge of the real self <clears throat> and it's very clear <clears throat> that we seldom find i come to you and i say that i like you liking you see that like you so because i like you then only i meet you if i dislike you i don't want to meet you so the mind is working at a surface level with the likes and dislikes can you ever say that i dislike you and i love you not possible can we say that i like you and i hate you also not possible
but the liking triggers the mind. We don't notice. This liking also triggers the mind. We don't notice. It has, we have become so much habitual, heavily conditioned. And in that conditioning, that is what is happening in the modern world. This young, younger generation with tremendous presence of the social, social media, we instantly say, I like you, so liking and the repetition of that liking, feeling or the thought causes the hesitation in the mind, it results into an attachment and then it doesn't become a long to declare that I am a soul, you are a soulmate. But with the tendency of the liking, the degree and the intensity of the liking drops, there takes the birth of a disliking, the soulmate becomes the soulmate. That is why I have been saying again and again, we marry to be happy. Marriage, a condition, contact with any person outside. We have already understood anything outside cannot be the cause of peace and happiness. Mind is also not the source of happiness. It is the mind that declares that I like you, you are my soulmate, so we marry to be happy. And after a few weeks and months and years, we divorce to be happy. Can we declare, mind you are crazy, I have to examine you. I have to examine you. I have to understand you. I cannot live like this for long. So when you have that intensity, clarity, commitment and sincerity, you continue the journey of the Eastern wisdom. That's why sometimes it is difficult for people to continue the journey of the Eastern wisdom. Then they say, okay, you know, this, that guy <coughs> was not good, so I divorced, now I found another guy. I recently heard uh, Amazon, Amazon owner's wife divorced with uh, Jeff Bezos, Amazon owner, uh, last year. And now she has already divorced another guy. What a good thing. So one conclusion we can drive, we can draw that the mind in ignorance, mind in misunderstanding, mind in with the likes and dislikes, mind is with attachment and detachment, cannot find happiness anywhere. Because that happiness does not last long. We keep on growing the doubts and the suspicion. So I made it very clear, any time in the world of event, person, people, thing, food, etc., the moment your mind says, what a pleasurable experience, just become aware. Recognize that your hesitation has come down in the mind that that is felt like a pleasure, but that pleasure is a manifestation of the real self. It has nothing to do with an object. It has nothing to do with the mind. Mind is an instrument of all the experiences. The most important thing that we miss in the journey is that we forget, we live in ignorance, we do not accept our misunderstanding that nothing in the world causes happiness, nothing in the mind that causes happiness 
is the Malay number one, uninvited, unwanted thoughts that causes the likes and dislikes should come to an end. <clears throat> I hardly invoked one or two principles, but I explained it in a way so that based on your level, that is why we need a teacher in this journey of Eastern wisdom. So now once we realize, I said, again I'm repeating so that you remember by heart, by soul, all the time, Whenever you experience the pleasure, just remember the phrase absence of hesitation in the mind is felt like a pleasure. My mind says I get happiness when I come in contact with a person, with an event, with a food, that statement is wrong. Because nothing in the world has a property of peace, happiness and love. I love the mouse, but does, does the mouse say I also love you? Come on, take my love as much as you want. Does the car say that love me? Oh, you love me, I also love you. And the car breaks down. Then we recognize what kind of a love the car has for us. Do you see that? This is what happens in our life. So that is the second thing. What did we say? Absence. Again, I'm repeating so that it should go into your head. Absence of hesitation in the mind inside is felt like a pleasure when we come in contact with the person we like. Absence of an hesitation in the mind, absence of hesitation in the mind is felt like a pleasure when the person we hate is too far from us. Look at the diplomacy of the mind. And that diplomacy is caused by the ignorance in the mind, misunderstanding. That is what we need to understand. The second thing that I have uh, that you, you just, you tell your mind, just examine. You move around your house, you look at the things and uh, gadgets and uh, keep on asking the mind, do you like this, do you like this, do you like this? You like this, keep it. But remove that misunderstanding. Because you like it, the object will give you the happiness. Because you like a person, person will make you happy. Not possible, my dear friend. What happens? The lane number one that keeps on hesitating me will calm down because now I live with the lane number two with an understanding, with the knowledge that I discussed, you know, in the practice also and before that. When I can do it anytime, anywhere, with anyone. And the third point that we, we picked up we realized, we understood it clearly that the mind is not the source of happiness. I experience happiness. <clears throat> you drink tea through the cup, but does not mean the cup is the source of happiness, source of tea. Did you understand? Yes. Cup is not the source of the tea, but we drink tea by putting it into the cup. We drive the car to cover a distance, but the car does not contain the distance. <clears throat> Same way, the mind 
does not have a property of peace and happiness. But we experience peace and happiness in the mind. So we have to, we have to separate the two. How do you know that? Sometimes mood swings, sometimes we are upset. So if the mind is the source of happiness, mind will continue to give us happiness instead of hesitation. So understanding all the points, you listen to it again and again and again until the mind settles in the lane number two. Then what is going to happen? You become the greatest seeker. So when we become a seeker, then what? Then we find out what exactly is the purpose of this journey of Eastern wisdom. We will penny, we will, we will go into minute details why we should go into the minute details because the mind should remove the ignorance. Why the mind should remove the ignorance? Because the ignorance is the cause of our suffering. What is that ignorance? It is misunderstanding like the mirror's water, like the blueness of the sky. So what will happen when we remove the ignorance? When we remove the ignorance, knowledge will dawn. Where the knowledge will dawn? Knowledge will dawn in your mind. <coughs> So when there is a knowledge in your mind, that knowledge is awareness and experience. Where are you sitting and listening to me at your home? So you have a right knowledge. Do you, have, do you ever have a doubt that you are living in a neighbor's house when you are living in your house? Do you ever have a doubt about your gender? So when we have a knowledge that is totally free from the doubt. <coughs> the doubt, lay number one. No doubt, lay number two. Realization, lay number three. Peace and happiness, love and wisdom. <coughs> mm. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. <clears throat> so when you're listening, then ask your mind, did you understand it? So if the mind says, hmm, no, listen to it again. <clears throat> the understanding simply means what? You are living in that knowledge. You are aware. You don't allow the mind to go for a spree of hesitation or craving or possession, a duality and a conflict. Then what happens? You become the greatest seeker to understand. <clears throat> what exactly is then understanding? We will understand the purpose of the life sets the journey of the Eastern wisdom. You can read in the book and then I'm going to explain it in a way that your mind can easily understand. That is what I, how I personalize. Thank you, my friend. That is all for today. <laughs>